We then had the clip of Pat McAfee on his show earlier today, where he's in the middle of interviewing uh, baseball reporter Jeff Passan, when all of a sudden the screen short circuits and a box appears in the studio, and Pat has to go get the box and brings it back, and then I expect Pat McAfee to sometimes have to do these wrestling angles, but to hear Jeff Passan have to react and go, is that a videotape? <laughs> this was the cringiest thing I have seen in a long time. And God bless uh, the Pat McAfee show that they are more than open to do this. It was so out of place on this show. And if I was just a regular sports viewer watching this and they were doing this, I'd be I'd turn this off in, in a heartbeat. I, I don't watch the Pat McAfee show, so I don't really know what the tone of, of the show is. Um, it's obviously very loose, and I, yeah. I'm sure their audience is more receptive to it. But I just, <laughs> I, I just think watching this angle play outside in the wild, like you do see why this would be such a turnoff to people. Yeah. So he has brought the tape with him to Dayton, Ohio, to the Nutter Center, and they air the tape. And this time, it is Eric Rowan, and he has asked about how he's doing and he says the last few years have been really hard and he is fighting back tears he used to have a family they were inseparable they had each other's backs but then one day the whole world changed he lost a brother the person that believed in him more than anyone but you have to keep going life goes on and when i thought i had everything going my other brother was gone too, and he is really fighting the tears here. He said he had no more family. He fell down a well that he couldn't get out of, and he didn't want to get out of it. Who was going to miss me? I'm just Rowan. And they pass him the, the sheep's mask, and he looks at it and says how it gives him hope. He needed help, and a hand reached out for him and gave him a purpose in his life to help those like himself. And we are going to take our broken hearts and make some beautiful art and it cuts and Cole and McAfee react to this calling him a tortured soul and Pat in the most serious delivery says it was an honor to transport that tape <laughs> for the love of God when these air let's go to commercial break after because I do not ever want to hear the announcers have to react to these again they're so difficult for them to come out of it was, it was an an my honor, honor to transport this tape, tape. I mean, yeah. this, is, this was, uh, listen, they have done a very good job of giving your motivations behind these characters. You're using real life grief to mm -hmm. explain these characters. Uh, but as we will get into later with, with, with the angles, I think it's like I'm having very different reactions to these videos versus like the segment that we're about to get later with Bo Dallas. Okay. Um, so first on the Pat McAfee thing, I, I, I guess I didn't have any real reaction to any of those segments. And I think for me, I've just like known to like block those out or at least like not even think of them as anything significant. Um, because to me, McAfee and really the announcers in general are just like they're unless they do something really crazy. I almost just kind of think of them as just like window dressing and like. I, I guess I didn't really consider the ridiculousness of like either that line or just even like, you know, everything on the show. Like for me, like I, I think I'm choosing to more so judge the success of this angle based on the people that are actually creating it. And, and that's primarily, I believe Rob Fee is, is the man's name. And of course, Bo Dallas and all the rest of the people in the Wyatt Six. And I'm assuming they have nothing to do with like what Pat McAfee is saying and also like how these tapes are delivered. Maybe they do. I don't know. Can but you imagine I, Michael Landsberg getting like it short circuits and suddenly a VHS tape? Uh, although T. Landsberg would do a great job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also imagining that in, in like 1998, the VHS probably wouldn't have uh, what, no. what's this? I mean, yeah. you'd have what, to is go this back. what is this? A Betamax tape? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should take it to the keg. See you tonight. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, we got to talk about this Rowan video because I thought this was the best thing on the show. I thought it was the best video they've done so far of this Wyatt Six entire angle. It was emotional. It um, because everyone watching this immediately thinks to the Brody Lee tribute show and seeing this guy like literally like the same look on his face well, in the ring where they just break down. 
even if you didn't watch the Brody Lee tribute show, which I'm assuming a lot of people watching Raw might not have, this is the first time we get to hear from Eric Rowan speak about Brody Lee. As far as I remember, he didn't speak on that show, right? He appeared at the end. I don't think he spoke. Did he? Um, not on the AEW shows itself, as I as I recall. No, I just I just don't recall. At least on a stage like this, like where we would have even heard from him speak about Brody Lee, and we certainly haven't heard. From, did he Did he talk about Bray? Was he on the Bray show? He was. He appeared again. Did he like Did he speak though? Yeah, he appeared. I I don't think he spoke. That was only a year ago. Okay. Anyway, so like we're getting to hear Eric Rowan the person speak about the impact and the sort of amplified impact of both of these deaths deaths together on him this at this point like was no longer a wrestling promo like this was this was all real you know this isn't a character he's talking about his real life and the loss and and he didn't name them either so when you first hear him describing losing his brother like you're thinking like in in the previous era He's only going to refer to Bray. He's probably not even going to, they're not even going to acknowledge mm-hmm. Brody Lee probably, but then you hear him describe like he's talking about both of the yeah. uh, of the passings, which, you know, for, for the Bo chapter, he's obviously just covering Bray. Yeah. But we, you know, everybody watching this, like if they know Eric Rowan knows what he's talking about and like he, you know, would go on to like insinuate that like he had thoughts of suicide after, you know, falling into a deep depression. I don't doubt for a second, like, the man actually went through some of those emotions. Um, I thought, like, you know, as we've kind of discussed, anytime we have to, like, talk about people who have to somehow bottle this sort of emotion into story. I mean, I thought this man did a really good job of bottling all of that into this on-screen speaking performance. I mean, the on-screen speaking performance of his life, if you even want to call it that. Um, And it continues to set the tone for this Wyatt Six angle as, like, a very grounded like group so far you know as maybe out there as you will discuss john i'm sure of um some of the in arena appearances are they're keeping the backstories very closely tied to real life they're real people who have suffered real trauma um i'm also curious after this what they do to follow this up because you've already started with Bo and eric rowan two people who have had direct relationships with with bray wyatt um it's hard for me to think like what the a Dexter Joe Gacy Loomis story or is. Dexter Loomis or a Nikki Cross would be able to like follow this up with in terms of like real emotion. It will be very awkward, okay, if Dexter Loomis shows up next week and talks about like Indy Hartwell and like the loss of the way or something like that. Like I that don't can't think they'll go be. that way. I so mean, I, they, they they may have something that you're just you know it's going to be some kind of origin story that people are not familiar with that they can incorporate or that mm-hmm. I agree I don't think the Indy Hartwell thing would uh would end well or uh, Christy Hemi and TNA or um, <laughs> I don't think I'll mention that. I mean he's kind of been a one note <laughs> performer you know he knows his lane okay and that's kind of been where he's Man, gone that's a deep pull. Chad Gable is out he has solved the mystery of Uncle Howdy's identity and calls out Bo Dallas who comes out and gets jumped by the Creeds, and they are beating down Bo, and this has no heat going on. He has run into the barricade. He has run into the post, and then Gable poses with Julius and Brutus, and Dallas starts to laugh. So they can't understand. Why is he laughing? So Gable and the Creeds continue to attack him. They're throwing him all over the ring. He's laughing. Then the lights go out, and finally, that's all this crowd wanted. They just want the show. They just want the light show Give us the dry ice. Like, that's what they want. Give us the piano. Mm -hmm. And they come alive. The Wyatts come out. The ring fills up with smoke. The Creeds and Gable retreat. And the Wyatts just pose in the center with the lantern as they learn and cut to commercial break. So Pat doesn't have to speak of what an honor it was to sit (laughs) ringside for this. Um, I thought until the Wyatts showed up, I I just thought this segment was just um, like, a screeching halt to the show for, for me. I just mm. didn't think the crowd cared. I thought for it, like this was the formation of the creeds with Gable. And I just don't think anyone cared. And it was almost like their offense was ineffective because you're doing the laughing with, with Bo. And I just think the audience, they were either just waiting for the Wyatts or did not care about the physicality going on. Well, I definitely think they were waiting for, for the Wyatts here. Um, I, I mean, I would suggest maybe th- there was some confusion from the audience because I don't know if they knew whether or not to treat the Wyatts up until this point as heels or baby faces. Let's remember, like, they started things off with, like, attacks on innocent people mysteriously, right? Um, 
But this was clear, a clear framing of Bo Dallas as a baby face, taking a beating from like, you know, like, first of all, I love the Creeds and Gable um, looking this way in their suits, in their like short haircuts. Like they're basically like, I don't know, like, like preppy, like, or like rich, you know, <laughs> like snobby, like bullies, right? Um like I guess the American version of like Gunther, and um, <laughs> they just got their hand-me-down suits from their father. <laughs> I I think they're great. Like you know, as, as three bullies, you know, beating up this innocent man who's not fighting back. Well, not so innocent, I suppose. He did, um, you know, uh, cause all, all that damage. He did kill some people, but um, this was like you know giving Bo Dallas the Tommy Dreamer treatment. Like they're beating him up and he's not fighting back, and we're supposed to feel sorry for him. And I think the audience might have just been, again, waiting for the Wyatts to return. Um, they're certainly not at the level where I think they feel so bad for Bo Dallas because, like, I think he's still so new. Um, but I found it captivating, you know, because of all this new stuff that was happening. The formation of, of Gable with, with um, the Creeds and also our first on-screen in arena appearance of Bo Dallas as this baby face character. This felt like a new direction to me. Um, because I don't know if like the, when the first night happened, if the Wyatts were supposed to be baby faces. Now it's clear, at least with this interaction with Gable and the Creeds, that they are supposed to be baby faces. The murder spree? You didn't think that was? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Baby not face so sure. design. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I, I really enjoyed the Rowan thing, uh, but uh, not this. Uh, well, at some point they have to take it in, in arena. You know, you can't just have a have a gimmick of like you know behind the scenes like well produced video packages. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I thought this was like their attempt at creating something cinematic. You know, in in arena, but I, I suppose you know according to my broadcast partners, to mixed results. I, I do think like this was good character building though of like Bo Dallas. I do wish something more substantial happened physically though. Like I, I think you no, you didn't just want the Wyatts to come out. I think you wanted one of these bullies to be attacked or like to suffer some sort of like fate. Instead, they just kind of drove them out. If this was a movie, I think you might have had a scene where like Bo Dallas would be able to transform into Uncle Howdy and like Julius would be like, you know, laid out somewhere. But I, I think I, they can't really they can only go so far with these special effects in a live setting um, they're still figuring a lot out but like I thought overall this has over delivered on my expectations with the Wyatt 6 